Well, we have a new expanding foam added to our lineup of expanding foam products. And this is one of our new flexible foams, which is part of our prop foam series. Now the prop foam series runs from the very uh, relatively soft uh, prop foam four that we have a lot of customers using to back uh, uh, latex masks and that sort of thing to the prop foam 10, which a lot of you have used for like prop heads and prop weapons and that sort of thing. And now we have the new prop foam 15. Now this is a density some of you have requested that has a very low expansion rate. And of course the 15, anytime with any of the foams where you see that number at the end, that is referring to the cubic foot weight. So if you have 15 liquid pounds of prop foam 15, that is going to expand and free rise to fill a cubic foot. So that is how, that is the measurement standard for uh, flexible and rigid foams. So when you see a four pound density foam, that means uh, four pounds of liquid foam, once it has expanded in free rise, is going to be roughly a cubic foot of total material. Um, so the benefit to a really dense flexible foam like this is you get a really nice tough skin on the surface. And where this is preferable is a lot of you in the film community that are casting uh, fight scene props and things like that. So uh, pipe wrenches, uh, hand tools, things like that, uh, prop guns, anything that uh, needs to have a really good skin on the surface, but still be made of a, a, a foam and preferably a durable foam material that uh, could be used repeatedly. Now, in the industrial world, we supply this for people doing padding applications, that sort of thing. This is like a, a really dense version of like Nerf foam. In the industrial world, typically you'd find this on uh, armrests in a car where you have that minimal uh, give, but still a flexible foam material. And again, the main benefit to this is that really nice integral skin. And typically you'll find that that works best on molds that don't have an oily surface to them. So typically short A20 and higher silicone molds. And really in my experience, the 10 cure silicones tend to give a little better skinning properties than some of the platinum silicones. But that's, again, that's one of those things you kind of got to play with on a case by case basis uh, because temperature, if, anytime you're casting flexible foams, temperature is a big issue. A warm mold and a warm work environment is ideal. So without further ado, we'll get to casting. Now, first off, some quick setup for this because any of these flexible foams or any expanding foam for that matter, sets up quickly just by na the nature of foam chemistry, they're going to uh, start expanding pretty fast into the pot life. So you wanna make sure you have everything ready to go. Now, what we're going to be using is an older mold. One of the reasons I wanted to feature this mold is just because this mold has recently turned about uh, 12 years old. Actually, no, I take that back. I think this mold is now almost 13 years old. Um, you could see the video of us making this on the YouTube elsewhere. But uh, this mold has been holding up great. We use it in a lot of workshops and we basically cast PT Flex and flexible foam into this repeatedly, and it's still in excellent condition. Now, what I've done prior to uh, the video here is I've gone ahead and brushed in some metal powders into some key areas on this mold. So this is a uh, Platsil 7325 silicone mold, and then we just went in and used some of our metallic powders, this is the gunmetal powder, and brushed that into some key areas. And what happens with that is the adhesive potential of the uh, prop foam grabs onto that metal powder and then pulls that out of the mold. So that minimizes a lot of the finishing work we have to do later on. So what we'll, we'll be doing with this is we're just going to be casting this with some red pigment to uh, just a red and a little bit of brown to get us this kind of uh, monkey wrench color. And then that silver powder will transfer over to the finished part, completing the look of our part. And again, the whole point of that is just to minimize how much paint work has to be done later. A lot of action props like this, unless you're working on a really big budget show, uh, a lot of this, some stuff like this is only going to be seen for milliseconds. So um, again, unless you've got the budget and the time for it, don't run if you're not being chased. So we're just going to create a very simple, uh, flexible foam prop.
Now, in addition to having all of the components that we're going to be using and our gram scale ready to go, the other thing we want to have ready is our mold straps because we will need to immediately strap this shut as soon as we get our foam poured into this. So I have two mold straps. This is just long enough of a mold that I like to, to put two straps on it running parallel right here. So we wanna make sure we get this the, our foam mixed up, poured into the deepest side of the mold, and then flip, that, flip this over on it, and then flip it over one more time so we get that liquid foam really good on both sides of the mold, and then we're gonna flip it upright once we get the straps on it. And it's just important to have a plan of action for all this because again, that foam reacts quickly. So you wanna have everything ready to go so you don't waste any time once the foam is starting to catalyze. Now this particular foam, the ratio is 100 parts of B to 40 parts of A. So we're gonna mix up 200 grams of B to 80 grams of part A. Now, because we want this to have that kind of monkey wrench color, I'm gonna mix in a little bit of the polycolor brown. And then a little bit of the polycolor red. Now I wanna go ahead and mix that in so I can get kind of a rough idea of what my color will be before I put everything together, just in case I need to adjust that any. But right now we have a nice, rich, dark red. But again, if we need to, we can always um, add a little bit more pigment. Really up to about one or 2% is about the, as much as you really wanna push some of these pigments. Some are more forgiving than others, but at, when you start getting more than about uh, one or 2%, you start to see a change in some of the physical properties. I'm gonna add just a little bit more brown. Now, if you're new to this process, if you haven't mixed up some of these products before, especially the foams where time is of the essence, I highly recommend experimenting with some small batches on some test molds before you do anything large scale because again, as soon as we add the part A, that's when the clock starts ticking. So you wanna make sure you have everything figured out and ready to go. And also important to remember that our color will change slightly because of the expansion of the foam, what's gonna happen is whatever color we have right now, it's gonna lighten by a shade or so as it starts to expand. So you wanna make sure you compensate for that you'll need to make your, uh, your base color a little bit darker than you actually want it to be. And, and again, I'm about to add the part A, so I wanna make sure I have all this ready to go because as soon as I put that in and pour this out, I gotta be ready to, to flip all this over and get it, get it ready to uh, strap shut. And since we did 200 grams, of part B, we're going to do 80 grams of part A. And again, starting out when you're new to this, keep a whiteboard handy where you can write some of your formulas down because again, when time is of the essence and you're trying to remember what you've got, it's real nice to have a whiteboard uh, across the shop that you can look at and see exactly what your batch size needs to be. Okay. And again, we wanna make sure we get that stirred up really well, even though we only have a few seconds to get that done, you wanna move fast. And then what I like to do is pour that in all those key areas And then we're gonna flip that over. And flip it back this way. And 
and already our foam is coming out the top. Okay, it's about uh, 20 minutes later and we're ready to demold. This is, as you can see from the uh, overage there, that uh, there, this is, this is a tricky, tricky job to do with uh, one set of hands. So this is where I would definitely recommend if you've got other people standing by to help you, it is preferable just for timing's sake. And just a quick word too about this mold. This is one of the, again, one of the reasons I wanted to use this mold is because it is well used and it is still serving us well as part of our mold library. This uh, was made in, in uh, several sections where we did a backing for this poured in place with Easy Flow Clear. So that's what that part is. And there you go. Now look at that right out of the out of the mold. We're going to have a really nice looking part. Now, because I was a little sloppy getting the mold shut, we're going to have a little bit more flashing than I'd like, but uh, not very, not too bad of a cast at all. Okay, like I said, I'm, I'm rushing a little bit just for the sake of the video and I'm kind of excited to play with this new foam, but it's time to carefully remove this and trim off any excess flashing. And you can do this with just a standard scissors. And this is another one of those things where if you have any defects in the area with the silver on it, you can always go back and dry brush some of the Sculpt Nouveau uh, Silver B metal coating. You see my little vents worked out well so we don't have air entrapment there on the tip of the wrench. And there we have our finished cast prop. Now this still needs a little bit more cleanup but for the sake of the video we're good here. But uh, one last little trick that you can do when you're casting foam uh, props like this, because it's sometimes tricky to estimate volume on a mold like this with an expanding material, and especially since the expansion rate of the casting foam is going to be different depending on the configuration of the mold. So what you can do is once you've cast a part like this, obviously we had a little bit more than I actually needed. I still have a lot left over in the mixing cup. So what we can do is put this on our gram scale and weigh it, and now we know precisely what it takes to fill this mold. And then the next time around, we mix a lot less based on that. Now, you always want to make sure anytime you're measuring out how much material or estimating the amount of material it'll take to fill a given mold, it's always a good idea to add about 10% or so to that just to make sure you have enough for adequate mixing and pouring because you're always going to have a little bit left behind in the mixing cup and a little bit of spillage coming out the sprue. And with foam, you want just enough material to build up a little bit of back pressure in the mold. If uh, you just barely have enough to fill the mold, sometimes you don't build up a really good pressure to get a nice skin on the surface. So again, you want just a little bit more than the exact amount required for the part. So there you have the process of casting a prop wrench using the new Prop Foam 15. And you can see now that this is set up a little bit more, it's not as uh, floppy. Um, this is a good hand prop, good weapon prop for fight scenes and that sort of thing. Uh, and again, realistic enough that uh, you throw this at somebody, they're definitely gonna move out of the way. Um, but uh, this is a nice addition to our prop foam line. Those of you who have been asking for a denser, flexible foam, this is a good one uh, for those kind of weapon hand prop kind of things, especially handguns, stuff that has a little higher detail on it that some of the softer foams may not get as crisp of a, a skin surface on. I'm going to put a link to all of the products we used in this video in the video description, uh, but also I'll put a link to our video library. That's a great a resource for those of you starting out or even if you've been doing this for a while. We have all of our material on YouTube organized by topic. And there's even some other little gems hidden in there that may or may not be available elsewhere. So uh, always check that video library page 
And also we put links with those videos to the products used in the video. So great way to learn and add things to your shopping cart accordingly. So if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, click the little bell icon so you get notified when we post new content. So thanks again for watching, and of course, please be sure to check the uh, links in the video description. And be sure when you go to our website, on the home page, there's a sign-up section for our newsletter. So you make sure you're, you stay informed on all the new products and excitement in the Biddy store.